This is the half and double angle identities tutorial. Let's begin by discussing the half angle identities, which I've listed below here. Now, something important to notice about the half angle identities is that we're usually using these to find some angle that is not easily found on the unit circle. And we do that by taking half the angle of a common angle on the unit circle. So let me show you what I mean by that. Let's take a look at this problem here. I'd like you to find the exact value of the expression by using a half angle identity. And the expression is the cosine of 15 degrees. Now if you were to take a look at your unit circle, you wouldn't see a 15 degree angle on your unit circle. It's not a commonly used angle. However, I could use the half angle identity that has to do with cosine to solve this problem. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So they're asking us to take the cosine of 15 degrees. Now the 15 degrees is half of what number? Well, it's half of 30 degrees. So I could put in 30 degrees here for R and R over two, so 30 over two is 15. So it's still the cosine of 15 degrees. So I could write it as the cosine of 30 over two. That's another way to say the cosine of 15 degrees, right? So the cosine of 30 degrees over two, which is 15 degrees, is equal to the positive or negative square root of one plus the cosine of that angle R, and we know that angle R that we're referring to is 30 degrees. It's not 15, it's 30 because half of that R is 15 and that's what we're really looking for. So that whole expression is written over two. Now notice this positive or negative here. What that positive or negative is referring to is whether or not the angle that you're looking for happens to be positive or negative. Now if you remember your acronym, all students take calculus, that tells you that in quadrant one here, all of our trig functions are positive. And in quadrant two over here, only the sine functions are positive. In quadrant three, only the tangent functions are positive. And in quadrant four, only the cosine functions are positive. Now 15 degrees is in quadrant one, which means this is going to be positive. So we don't have to worry about the negative. We know that our angle is gonna be positive. So the cosine of 30 over two is the cosine of 15, and that's what we're trying to solve here. So I'm just gonna leave that off to the left and we're gonna ignore it for right now. You could again write it as the cosine of 15 degrees if you wanted because cosine of 30 over two is cosine of 15 degrees. Now we're just dealing with what we have on the right here, which is the square root of one plus the cosine of 30 degrees. Well, remember the cosine is the x variable, the x coordinate point here of this point 30 degrees, so it's root three over two. So what we have here is one plus the cosine of 30, which is root three over two, all over two. So what I wanna do is get a common denominator here on the top of one and root three over two. So I want them both over two, so I'm gonna write that one as two over two plus root three over two, all over two. So I haven't changed the problem at all because one is two over two. Anything over itself is one. So now I'm gonna combine our like terms on the numerator here of our radical sign. So two over two plus root three over two is simply two plus root three over two. And then that whole expression is still over two. So I wanna get rid of that over two here in our denominator. So I'm just gonna multiply by the reciprocal of two, which is one half, and that'll get rid of that two that we're dividing by, and that's all still under our radical. So two plus root three times one is still two plus root three, and two times two is four. So this is all, we have the square root of two plus root three over four which can be written as the square root of two plus three over the square root of four. And we know that the square root of four is two. So this can really be written as the square root of two plus the root of three all over two. So our answer for this problem then becomes the square root of two plus root three over two. Now that's a pretty complicated answer. That 
gives you a little bit of insight as to why you don't see 15 degrees over here on our unit circle. Because that would be the cosine of 15 degrees, and that's a lot of information to put over here. It's definitely not as easy to handle as these simple signs that you see and cosines that you see over here on the unit circle for things like 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, etc. So now that we've done that, let's do one more problem using half angle identities. Given that the cosine of theta is equal to negative 7 ninths, and theta is between 90 and 180 degrees, find the exact value of the following expression. And the expression we've been given is the cosine of theta over 2. Now, to help us out here, I'm going to bring in the unit circle. We don't know theta right now. We know that the cosine of theta is equal to negative 7 ninths. And we also know that theta lies between 90 and 180 degrees. So 90 and 180 degrees is right here in quadrant 2. And if you remember our acronym of all students take calculus, in quadrant 2 only sine functions are going to be positive. So let's begin by using our cosine half angle identity here, the cosine of angle r over 2 or theta over 2 here. So I'm going to write that as cosine of theta over 2 is equal to positive or negative root of 1 plus cosine theta over 2. So we want to know if we're going to be dealing with a positive or a negative here. Well, we were told that theta is between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. However, we're dividing theta by 2 in our problem. So if we divide that by 2, this whole expression by 2, we now know that theta is going to be between 45 degrees and 90 degrees. That's half of 90 degrees and half of 180 degrees respectively. So theta is here. And between 45 and 90 degrees, here's your 45 degrees and here's 90. So that means that theta is going to be here in quadrant 1 now. And in quadrant 1, all of your trig functions are positive, which means our value is going to be positive. So I'm not going to use the negative here. We're just going to use positive root of 1 plus the cosine theta. And cosine theta, we know, is equal to negative 7 ninths. So 1 plus a negative 7 ninths, all divided by 2. So really what we have up top here under the radical, 1 plus a negative 7 ninths is 1 minus 7 ninths. So we'll just leave it written like that. So we have the cosine of theta over 2 is equal to positive the root of 1 minus 7 ninths. Now we can rewrite 1 as 9 ninths. Anything over itself is 1, so we have 9 ninths minus 7 ninths in the numerator. And in the denominator under the radical, we have 2. So we know that 9 ninths minus 7 ninths is 2 ninths, and that's all divided by 2 still under the radical. So to get rid of that divided by 2, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, which is 1 half. And that'll get rid of our 2 down here. So 2 times 1, and I'll write that over here now, underneath the radical, 2 times 1 is 2, and 9 times 2 is 18. So we have the root of 2 over 18, and that's equal to cosine of theta over 2. And the root of 2 over 18 reduces to the root of 1 over 9. And now we can take the square root of both of those numbers. The square root of 1 is 1, and the square root of 9 is 3. So the cosine of theta over 2 is equal to 1 third. However, we want to find theta. So we're going to take the inverse cosine of our answer, 1 third. And when you do that, you find that theta has a value of approximately 70.5 degrees. And you'll notice that 70.5 degrees falls between 45 degrees and 90 degrees as we said it would. All right, now let's take a look at our double angle identities. So here are your double angle identities. You can see that there are going to be five available for you to use. Now remember, with these double angle identities, you want to eventually memorize them. However, for the purpose of this tutorial, I want you to keep them with you while you're doing this problem, as well as the other problems in this section on the site. 
So let's begin by taking a look at a problem and then we'll get into those double angle identities. In this problem, I'd like you to find the exact value of the expression by using a double angle identity. And the value of this expression here that we're looking at is tangent of 120. Now, I'd like to begin the problem by bringing in the unit circle here. You know that you can calculate the value of tangent of 120 without using a double angle identity. However, I'm going to show you how to do it both ways right now so that you can see the value of double angle identities. So, first let's take a look at how we would normally find the tangent of 120 degrees. Well, here's 120 degrees on our unit circle. And you know that to find the tangent, you just take the sine of 120 degrees, which is root 3 over 2, and you divide that by the cosine, which is negative 1 half. So to divide that by a negative 1 half, we're simply going to multiply by the reciprocal, which is a negative 2 over 1. That'll get rid of this right here. And now the 2 is going to cross cancel, and we have root 3 times negative 1, which gives us a value of negative root 3. So that's the standard traditional way of solving for the tangent of 120. Let me show you how you could arrive at the same answer using a double angle identity. In this case, we're obviously going to be using this double angle identity because it's the only one of those five double angle identities that has to deal with tangent. So this suggests the tan of 2 times theta. So what you want to think of is what number times 2 would give us r theta, which is 120 degrees. Well, that would be the tangent of 60 degrees, or 2 times 60 degrees. That would give us our 120. So on the left here, we have the tangent of 2 times 60, which is the tangent of 120. So these two are equivalent here. And that's going to be equal to 2 times the tangent of theta, which theta in our case is going to be 60 degrees, divided by 1 minus tangent squared of theta. So tangent squared of 60 degrees. So now we want to again look at our tangent of 60 degrees. So we'll come over here to our unit circle and we're going to solve for the tangent of 60 degrees. Remember to do that we just take the sine of 60 degrees and we divide it by the cosine of 60 degrees. So we have the sine of 60 degrees which is root 3 over 2 and we're dividing it by the cosine of 60 degrees which is 1 half. So again, to get rid of that 1 half on our denominator here, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal, which is 2 over 1, and that'll get rid of all that. So we find that the tangent of 60 degrees is going to be 2 root 3 over 2. The 2's are going to cross cancel, and we're just going to get root 3. So we can plug that root 3 in now for anywhere you see the tangent of 60 degrees. So this problem again now is going to be 2 times the tangent of 60 degrees, which is root 3, over 1 minus the tangent squared of 60 degrees. So tangent of 60 degrees is root 3 squared. So we're going to remark that over here. 2 times root 3 is 2 root 3. 1 minus root 3 squared. So root 3 squared is simply 3. So we have 1 minus 3 on the bottom. So now we have the 2 root 3, if we've simplified, 1 minus 3 is negative 2. 2 over negative 2 is negative 1, and the 2's cancel. So our answer is simply negative root 3 when we take the tangent of 120 degrees. Notice that's exactly what we got before, taking the tangent of 120 degrees in the traditional way. We got a negative root 3. So there's no reason to be worried about doing double angle identity problems because you can always check your work against the traditional way. It's simply another way to arrive at that answer. I hope throughout this tutorial you've seen that half and double angle identities aren't too worrisome. All you need to do is practice for a little bit and work on memorizing the different identities. And that'll help you get through these problems.